What you have is I mean, this is HD, the Harvest Disseminator, bringing you a review of the Hasbro, Mobile Legends, Age of Apocalypse, Sugarman Build the Figure Wave, Morph. Kevin Sidney, who we know today as Morph, was originally a foe of the X-Men. His original character name was the Changeling, and he was a member of the villainous group Factor 3. He first appeared in 1967's Uncanny X-Men number 35, where we first get a glimpse of his back while he absorbs Banshee on a giant screen. He made his first full appearance in Uncanny X-Men number 37. He becomes reformed in this run and takes on the form of Professor X so that Professor X can seclude himself and devise a defensive plan against the impending Xenox invasion. However, he is killed in Uncanny X-Men number 42. The reader is led to believe that it was Professor X that died. However, when Professor X returns in Uncanny X-Men number 65, he reveals that it was in fact Changeling that took his form and got killed by Grotesque. Kevin Sidney would be resurrected in the X-Men animated series and he would have his first appearance as Morph in print in X-Men Adventures number 1 which was published in 1992. And of course Morph in the form of the action figure we about to examine first appeared in Age of Apocalypse Alpha. That's a little bit about his background, y'all. This is the packaging that he came in. Of course, you're going to see the Build the Figure Sugar Man logo right there. You do have the Age of Apocalypse logo here on top. You have that X-Men font from the X-Men uh, Alpha and I believe Omega comic book. You know what, y'all? I'm led to believe that we might have a second wave of these figures, Age of Apocalypse, simply based on this box, to me at least, and I'm probably wrong about this, this very much reminds me of the cover of Age of Apocalypse Alpha, you know, his his face, Apocalypse's face is up there in the left hand corner of that book when you fully open it, that is, alright, so uh, I'm going to assume that we're going to get an Omega Wave as well, hopefully, and hopefully Gambit is in that wave and Rogue, it would be a disservice, I would know that Hasbro hates Gambit. If they don't give us a gambit in the second run of Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> I'm just going to put it out there and say it, y'all. But here is my man Morph and all of his playfulness. He looks really nice right there. You have a product shot here on the back. A short biography, of course, in this wave. We're getting Jean Grey, X-Men, Sunfire, Wild Child, who I already reviewed. Weapon X, Morph, and of course Dark Beast. Bam, the same art here on that side. You will get the barcode here at the bottom, and I picked this dude up at Target, so boom, there he is in all of his packaging glory, now let's get this dude out the box and see what he's all about, and man, I think I'm going to have a really good time posing this guy, of course he is going to have a reused body mode, I believe there's some new parts on him, we'll take a closer look at that here in a minute, but overall, man, I think he looks great, his comic book portrayal, I believe they pretty much captured most of it. There are depictions of Morph in the comic books where he's not wearing gloves. But of course this is going to be based on a depiction where he is wearing gloves. In his very first depiction, he's kind of running and you can't really get a full view. But all of that pain in there seems to be accurate. Uh, especially his depiction in the Exiles. Uh, of course he's wearing those yellow gloves. He has those yellow boots. Uh, of course he has that white face. Uh, in some depictions, he doesn't have the black rings around his eyes, others he does. So, you know, it all depends on what depiction you're looking at when you're comparing them to comic book portrayals. But overall, man, I think he uh, looks good and he is accurate uh, to the comics. So, let's get this guy off the stand and first let us take a look at his accessories. And the truth of the matter is, he doesn't come with any accessories. All he comes with is a Build-A-Figure part, and I believe this is going to be the right leg of Sugar Man. We will build this dude on the channel. Uh, we'll be re re reviewing the entire wave of the Age of Apocalypse figures. So, uh, we'll take a closer look at the leg whenever we build this guy. So, let us take a look at this guy's head sculpt and his body sculpt. Firstly, man, his head, it is simply white, and it looks good, man. As I said, it's comic book accurate. 
He does have these black rings around his eyes. He has a smirk on his face, man, which I think is appropriate because it's almost like Morpheus, like comic relief. You know what I'm saying, man? He, uh, just a very fun character. And his head, man, is just straight white, man. As he said in that first issue of Exiles, man, he didn't bring a sunblock, man. <laughs> He's about to get sunburned. And I like how they put that, uh, that black line over his eyebrow, it's almost it was like it, it, it contributes to the smirk that he's making on his face, like he's raising an eyebrow, if you will. So uh, I like how that came out, man. His ears are there, you can see that, man. And so the shape of his head is nice, uh, just very comic book accurate. You can see his eyebrows there again, man. They look really good. Uh, yep, take a look at the back of his head, nice and round. So it has a great shape, man, and I believe it captures his essence pretty well this is the spider-man 2099 body mold and uh you know i think it works well for him uh let's take this cape off and look you don't have to take his head off to take off the cape it just comes right off all right y'all so uh you can just work that right over his head we'll take a look at that cape in a minute but you can see that they have this paint here on his body his body is blue and they put some black paint here on his arms you have some on his chest on his abs right here going down his legs and again you have uh, black on his arms right here as well uh, so that's the paint no paint on the back uh, you do have uh, you know I think new gloves at least I can't find a figure that's wearing them Captain America ain't wearing them so I believe they might be new uh, glove cuffs that is because you take these off once you take off his hands and the same thing here with his uh, boots down here, this boot cuff, I believe it's brand new. I uh, can't find a figure in my collection that's wearing them. Uh, there might be a character I don't have that's wearing them. You know, I, I do have to take that into account. So they might be reused, but to my knowledge right now, they are new. But they could be old. Uh, so that is pretty much his body mold, y'all. It's reused, you know, so there's no need to get into any great detail uh, about it. You know, but uh, if we want to take a look at the, the cuffs of the boots, man, they just, you know, not a whole lot of detail in them like Captain America's or the uh, Bucky Cap body mold. But, you know, they look good, man, for what they are, right? So, yellow uh, gloves, yellow boots, blue body, white head, and the cape. So, the cape, y'all, it just, it has this little uh, piece right here that goes into the peg hole on his back. So you just slide that on. You could stick it in there, man. But you know, I can never get these things to stay in. They always want to come out. And when you get them in, it's like the cape, you know, it doesn't really hit his body too well. And it ends up choking him. So I just kind of like let it hang like this, man. It serves as like a kickstand too. So you can kind of like lean him back like that. You can see I don't have him standing on his feet 100%. I'm using that cape as a kickstand. Just I try to do that with uh, Magneto, man. It doesn't always... Uh, happen that way. Here's Magneto's cape, and this is the Magneto from the three pack with Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. So, you know, you have this little piece right here on this cape. Same kind of phenomenon where it pegs into the back. You know, I first thought it was Magneto's cape from this, uh, from the family three pack, but it's not, man. It's a totally different cape. And I looked at the other Magnetos I have, and yeah. There might be an earlier Magneto that wore the cape that I don't have. That's a possibility, but it seems to be new to me. We're going to take his cape off for the articulation. So let's do that. Morph can look up that high. He can look down that low. Of course, he will have an ab crunch. So you can get his ab crunch to bend back that far back. And it can go this much forward. He will have uh, a 360 here with his arms, and what's beautiful about this body mold with the Spider-Man 2099, butterfly joints, baby. Gotta love that. So he has butterfly joints. Uh, he will have upper bicep swivel. He has a double jointed elbow. Now, the gloves could get in the way, but what I do with this is, uh, let me try to get the light on this a little bit better. So I bend this bottom part up first. Then I've been the top part, so I think you can get, you know, you know, some decent uh, range with this, you know. So you could definitely get him to touch his face without a problem. Okay, so I like that. The butterfly joint also helps out. So he does have all of those functions. You do have a swivel at the wrist, and his hinges go up and down. 
Uh, he will have waist swivel. You can get a 360. His legs come out that far. You will have a upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees. You do have a boot swivel and you will have his feet that can go up that high. They can go down that low. You have ankle pivoting. You have peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And your boy Morph is going to stand in a little bit over six inches. And here he is scaled next to my favorite female figure, Blink. And the only other character that I reviewed from this wave, Wild Child. And if you take note in the Age of Apocalypse art, you will find these silver bumps on, you know, a lot of these characters. Wild Child is going to fall. Had a real hell of time getting this guy to stand up if you watch my Wild Child review. Uh, my analysis is that this dude is really hard to stand up, but... Uh, definitely like the theme with the uh, silver bumps on the costumes uh, with a lot of these figures and with a lot of the characters in the Age of Apocalypse storyline. Here he is still next to Magneto and Rogue. And one thing I wanted to mention was, you know, with these plastic capes like Magneto, this guy's so hard to stand up because of that cape. If we could get some soft goods, that would be ideal. I'm not sure if Hasbro will ever give us soft goods with Marvel Legends now they have with the Black Series, uh, Star Wars Black Series so why not throw us some soft goods with the Marvel Legends man because this guy's a pain in the A double snakes to stand up here he is scaled next to Apocalypse and Mr. Sinister and here we have him scaled next to two New Orleans born superheroes we have the most glorious most powerful Queen of New Orleans Monica Rambo. And the Prince of the French Quarter, Remy LeBeau, known in the quarter as Gen. If you like the Age of Apocalypse storyline, then this figure's a must-have. If you didn't like the Age of Apocalypse line, perhaps you're not going to buy anybody in this wave in particular. I'm not a completist, so I don't buy every Marvel Legends action figure. However, for me, this morph and this entire wave is a must-have. I'm just a straight X-Men fan. Uh, of course, Gambit is my favorite superhero, and he comes from that uh, universe, the X-Men universe. So, you know, I try to get every X-Men figure I can. But overall, without bias, the head sculpt captures the playfulness of Morph. The body mold is great. It's the Spider-Man 2099 body mold, which has great articulation. I like the cape, even though soft goods would have been great. Um, I believe we might have some new parts here with those boot cuffs and those gloves. I could be wrong about that, however. The paint job is decent for what it is. So overall, without bias, I like the figure. I think it's a great figure. And if you're doing action figure photography, I believe that the guy could uh, come to some great use. Uh, if you have a great diorama, um, you know, man, you can make any of these figures pop. So, with that said, man, I hope you all enjoyed the review. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed already, consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and giving the video a like. I will be reviewing the entire wave. So, with that said, mon ami, as we say here in New Orleans, till next time, les bon temps roulés.